Castology. Hello and welcome to the Liz Cast. This is Castology. You haven't just stumbled upon some rando podcast called the Liz Cast, but this is my episode, which means I get to choose what it is about. I am here with my fellow castologists. Nick Flicker. And Zane C. Weber. And again, I really enjoyed the last time that with my Liz Cast that we asked a question and talked about it because I think it's good to. You know, especially if you either have a podcast or you're thinking about having mm. one, we we can help. We mm. can help some with some advice from people who have been reviewing podcasts for years now. We have a lot of opinions. We have a lot of we opinions. Uh, you know, one of us runs a podcast network. That's me. Guess which mm. one it is. No, podcast spoil network. We just spoiled it. And, well, one of us hosts a podcast production company. Yeah. I get wonder who. Yeah, I, I wonder. Oh, who could it be? Um, so, yes, basically <laughs> I want to talk this week about cover art. So I want to talk about what you guys and me, because I have opinions too, makes for good cover art. And And first of all, I've heard a lot of people recently, in fact, I heard someone on a podcast today being like, oh, cover art for like YouTube or cover art for this, no, none of it matters. I wholeheartedly disagree. What is the importance of cover art to you, gents? Zane, you first. Okay. So. As a designer. Yeah. Cover art is your brand. Yeah. So Mm. your brand has to reflect your product and your personality and how you relate to your audience. Mm -hmm. So that's the thing. Something, a podcast about. A Zane Dry podcast is not going to have similar podcasts, uh, similar podcast art to a musical theater adventure comedy podcast. Mm-hmm. Um, and if they did, it would not work. The world would be topsy turvy. Mm. Well, if they did, like you would be expecting something different. So, yeah. like as a designer, like the quality of your podcast art gives someone an indication of the quality of your podcast before they get into it. And that can be a bad thing as well. If you have great podcast art and really poor audio quality, people are going to feel like yeah. there's a disconnect there. See, we've had a couple of instances where there have been podcasts that have smashed it out of the park in terms of quality. They've been amazing. But their cover art has looked clip and yeah. it bugs me to this day because I'm like, do you know how many people – honestly – They say you can't judge a book by its cover, but that's literally all anybody does. I mean, I do. Witness Borderlands. Yeah, I know. (laughs) And look how that turned out. (laughs) This is the thing. Like, uh, what's your opinion on cover art? Look, I think for me, having, uh, you know, I've I've been working in social media for a while now. and, And one of the things you were saying, obviously, is that YouTube cover art is important. And it's not even just limited to that. It's now across the board on Instagram. It's on Facebook. Um, At the... For every client that I've worked for, um, cover art has been the most important thing in mm. that it's the first thing that someone sees before they look at your stuff. Yeah. That's it. So if you want to make a good impression, a good strong visual impression. It's the same thing as having a, a website. So yeah. you can not have a website and people will just be disappointed when they search for you to find out more information. Mm. If you don't have good quality podcast art, people will see it and go like, oh, okay, maybe I won't listen because they don't put a lot of effort into this. And it might just be that you don't know how to put effort into podcast Mm. art and that's totally fine. We can't all be brand managers of everything. I am rubbish at any of the designing, but I know what I don't like as Zane who has designed (laughs) uh, art for me before can attest to. Um, My Biggest bit of advice for people in what I find appealing in cover art is you have to remember, especially with podcast cover art, that it's going to be tiny when people see it. So if you are going to overcomplicate it, you need to make sure that at least the big picture is appealing and then if they're Mm. going closer, they can see more detail. But my advice is usually to keep it clean, clean as you can, or interesting enough that both the details and the big picture combine to make an impression. Yeah. I think, I think the principle of like kiss, like keep it simple, stupid is probably the best, best advice that I would give to someone. If you're not sure, honestly, like I, some of the biggest podcasts I know, and this is probably more in sports, are just text 
It's yeah. just big well, old I mean, text that's I mean, beautifully coloured. Have you seen our logo? It's just that. text. Right? Yeah. It's just castology on yeah. a blue field. And it's yeah. really, it's really <laughs> strong. It's re- it's just strong visually, and it tells like because it, I mean, our name it just shows tells you exactly what we are. We don't need to be creative with cover art. Whereas yeah. there's a lot of other podcasts. For example, one I want to bring up is Gutting the Sacred Cow, mm. oh, where yeah. uh, not the name tells me nothing, and because the cover art. Also tells me mm. nothing. Well, the cover art really just reiterates the name, which is confusing. Which is confusing. But the podcast was actually really yeah. enjoyable. Yeah. So you've got to make sure that your message, if it's not mm. getting through in the text, it's getting through in the imagery. Yeah. Did they change that episode? The name of that podcast? No, it's, that was still, it's we... still called oh, okay. Gutting the Sacred Cow. I think they changed the cover art. Since okay, though. that's cool. Um, my my go to advice for people who aren't who, who don't know what they want for podcast art and aren't hiring someone to do their podcast art is avoid unnecessary microphones. People know that they're listening to a podcast. Yeah. Um, and a microphone is just everyone taking up space. The thing is, that's not unique about your podcast. No. If mm. you're doing a movie podcast, I would prefer a movie reel or a, or a film reel over a microphone on your podcast app because I know I'm listening to a podcast. I want to know what the podcast is about. Yeah, I've literally yeah. come to my podcast app to listen to you. Yeah. I don't if you're doing need a podcast know. about podcasting or about microphones, or about microphones, or, or or about sound or anything like that, then yeah, you want your imagery to reflect your content, not the medium that you're. One interesting thing I had a I had a workshop um, had a workshop at work. They did one of these team building workshops, and one of the great things that um, the marketing guy said was, "You need to be able to yell it from a train platform." Like your concept, like what do you want people to know? Podcast about podcasts. That's that's us. Yeah. Like, and so that does that in the name. Whereas if we can't do it in the name, do it in the pictures. Like yeah. if also, someone is going past it in a train, they want to know what it's about by going past it. I also think if you if you think bigger picture as well, if you go, if this podcast was featured on Apple Podcasts, if it was featured on Pocket Cast, if it was featured on Spotify in the featured carousel, like what, like what do you look for? And like, will it pop? Will people go, oh, this looks interesting and then go and check it? But because it also that's the has to pop super tiny as well. Yeah, yeah, exactly. That, that exact reason is why, um, to answer my question and spoil it again, I... I'm a podcast producer for people who make get me to do their podcast for them. I always kind of veer away from having like headshots on podcast art. Yeah. Um, because I think your name is more important than your face when it comes to a podcast. Unless you are a celebrity, I would mm-hmm. avoid putting your face on your podcast because nobody so, knows you. Put it on your other marketing. Yeah. yeah. Not necessarily because again, you're gonna very small. A, a, a face when it's one it's centimetre tall. It's a sea tall. of people at the moment in podcast yeah. land. Like. When it's one centimetre tall, you can't tell the difference between Paris Hilton and Gwyneth Paltrow or I'm going to say Actually, Martin Scorsese. You can't tell the difference. <laughs> oh, Jesus. Just, just, <laughs> I feel like yeah. I could, but sure. No, and you're exactly right. Like when it's – you've got to think about when it's in a list, not yeah. when it's on the front page of Apple Podcasts because that is something that is hard to do. Think about it when it's in a list and you're scrolling past. You want something that catches your eye that sort of gets across what you're doing. And honestly, my biggest tip for new podcasters is pick a colour and go all Mm -hmm. in on that colour because if someone is listening to your podcast and is looking for it, they'll look for the colour before they look for words or shapes People have said that to me about, not with this podcast, but with my other podcast, which I'm not going to mention because I don't want to be that person, but they often... Shh, I'm not self-promoting today. No, I'm promoting for you. Thank you, Ghost of Boyfriends Past, he said. I'm just going to do it now. <laughs> Whatever. Um, we've got a tealy green colour with a big red lollipop. Yep. And a lot of people, I've had two or three people emailing when we changed our logo because it used to be a like a, a photo, like a, like a greyish photo, yeah. kind of. And they're like, now when I scroll, I'm immediately like neutral, 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 bright green. So... Yep. It works. And then, I mean, all of these are very easy branding guidelines to follow, but uh, podcasts being so personal, people people have opinions in there. It's their babies and they don't want to kill their babies. And honestly, the best advice is to, like Nick said, keep it simple, pick a colour, aim towards big words and name and your names mm. uh, and the name of the podcast and imagery that reflects your content. Yep. Yeah. Amazing. Um, and if you can make it cool and funky as well and put a twist on it that people go like, wow, that's actually really cool. Yeah. Even better. Yeah. 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 Also, cool. in yeah. terms of tools, 
Canva is an incredible tool yep. for that. It is so easy to make stuff in Canva yeah. that looks really, really impressive. Canva, yeah. if you want to sponsor us, yeah. <laughs> maybe. Give me, give, me, give me some money and I'll say it on every podcast I have. <laughs> yeah, well, I mean, Canva is one of the tools that the network provides to our podcasters because it is... It's an incredible it's a tool. It's solid tool. It's not as sophisticated as like actual design stuff but, but it, it makes does it what look you like to. you know what you're yeah. doing yeah. and yeah. i never know what i'm doing so <laughs> this is a good thing all right thank you for such a great um little chat and hopefully someone out there in podcast land finds this uh beneficial and if you want to revise your podcast cover art ask some friends what they think Take a poll of the people yeah. who listen. Post it on your social media and say, ask people yeah. for feedback. What do you like? What do you not like? What would and you like to see? be prepared for actual feedback. Yeah. yeah. That's the biggest thing that I've, you know, learned as a podcaster is that people, if you ask for what people think, they will tell you and yeah. you need to take that on board because they are your listeners. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right, guys. Thank I you. I promised a comment. Okay. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So we, That's I right. set us up with a pod page just for Castology. It's super simple, not sponsored, but should be. Um, and we got our first review on, on pod page. And it's just, it, it's from Rebar ZZZ. So I don't know who well, that is, but asleep. thank you, Rebar. Um, very addictive, excellent analysis, getting a lot of great recommendations from this pod about pods. Yay! And thanks, Reba. Again, that's that. That's a great uh, explanation of what this podcast is. Wonderful. It's so, really what kind. is the address of that so people can go review us? Just podpage.com forward slash castology, and Guys, you can review either individual episodes or uh, the podcast overall. We a hundred percent will read out any five star reviews that we get because, god damn it, we love it, and we love that you take the time. To think of us. Yeah. This has been the Liz cast. You've been here with me, Liz Best, and Zane C. Weber. As well as Nick Bleeker. Keep listening to podcasts, everybody. There are known knowns, known unknowns, and unknown unknowns. But there are also unknown knowns. The Ancient and Esoteric Order of the Jackalope is a secret society devoted to unearthing and sharing this forgotten knowledge. Each episode, we take one of these strange stories and share it with you. No topic is off limits, except for the obvious. Available wherever fine podcasts are sold.